a couple of days ago, uh, when CJ's body arrived back um, in Texarkana, um, we, he and I did what we always do once a week. I went to cut his hair. Um, we used those haircutting sessions for he and I to have talks away from all the noise, no sports, about just blocking everything out so we can have some father-son time. Well, during our conversation while I was cutting his hair, um, he told me to make notes because he always used to tell me when I made practice plans versus not making practice plans, he said, if I didn't have a practice plan, he said, I always talk too much. And he said, if I had a practice plan, he knew that there would be a stopping point. So that's why you see me with notes today. Um, first off, I want to take this time to thank each and everybody that um, is here and those who are not here that have said prayers for um, our family and loved ones as we go through this difficult time. Um, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Um, we can't thank you enough, and when we do get a chance to hug you, shake your hand, kiss you, um, we're going to try to show you with our compassion. Um, Ace just placed a baseball to go with CJ. Um, and I asked him, what's the ball for? And if anybody knows CJ, um, and Ace surely does, um, his idol was Jackie Robinson. So when I asked him what the ball was for, he said, well, so, a, so CJ and Jackie Robinson have a baseball to play with. To all our friends, classmates, teammates, keep your head up. The best way to honor somebody is to live your life similar to the life that they were living to accomplish the mission that they were trying to accomplish. So to all his classmates, teammates, guys who have traveled from all over the country to be here, all you young ones, keep your head up. Okay, for every dark night, there's a bright day to follow. So make sure we approach that bright day with a mission to move forward in a positive way. Let's get to know CJ a little bit. Um, you know, as a kid, I always told him that if somebody has to describe you and the first thing that comes out of their mouth is how athletic you are, that there's a huge problem with the way your mom and I raised you. We really believe that. I explained to him that sports is what we do, but not who we are. I told him we use sports to reach people. And when we have their attention, we deliver a positive message that can spread to the masses. Just like most kids, he would ask me, what do you mean? What does that mean? Tell me, Dad, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, I would further break it down to him and tell him that people should enjoy being around you rather than just tolerate your presence. And I used to tell him that you have to have such a huge presence that you make others around you better. And as he got older, he started to really, really, really buy into that. CJ was a kid who never boasted about his accolades. Um, he had three scholarship offers early this fall while, while in the eighth grade, multiple sports. But he didn't want me to tell anybody because he said in his own words that it would be a distraction to his teammates. He hated the attention. He just didn't like it. 
He liked the work, but he just did not like the attention that sports and all his accolades brought him. He would rather his teammate get the credit. He told me one time during football season, I think he had two or three touchdowns at the time, um, and the coach gave him the ball, um, and he scored a fourth touchdown. And he wasn't upset with the coach or anything, but on the ride home, he was like, Dad, and I just sometimes wish the coaches would give someone else the ball so that they can get that last touchdown. Well, if you really want to know who CJ is, that's who he is. He loved the LSU Tigers. I can remember as far back as him being five years old and knowing every player's full name in the town that they were from, from the media guy. Before he knew the whole process and how sports work, you know, I asked him, I said, what team, what professional team do you want to play for when you graduate college? His answer, word for word, and remember, this is, when, this is before he knew the process. His answer, word for word, what, I think I'd rather play, have a 10-year career at LSU. <laughs> now, we all know that's not possible. But that's a testament to how much or how big of a diehard LSU fanatic he was. Let's, let's learn a couple of CJ's pet peeves. One was having to listen to his mom say the famous phrase, that's not right, do it again. When he was reading, writing, folding clothes, cleaning the bathrooms, specifically cleaning the toilet. Because we've always felt like in order to have real humility, you have to be willing to get down on your knees and do jobs that you really don't want to do. And that's the way we raised them. And that's the way we raised those two. Washing dishes. I can't tell you how many times he'd wash dishes 30 minutes, Marie would come check the dishes and remove all the dishes and make him come do it again. Whether it was doing push-ups, if they weren't right, do it again. Making his bed, if it's not right, do it again. Putting lotion on, doing his hair, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I've noticed some really epic love sessions between CJ and Mama. And he was better because of all of them. Another one of his pet peeves was when I would always remind him, and this is probably daily, you know, I used to tell him, CJ, man, just to, just to let you know, you're still a little bit behind where I was when I was your age. Although I was joking, one of his ways of getting back at me, and he has every video I've ever played, he would watch the old highlight clips, pick out the ones of me striking out, and he would pause them until I walked in the room, and he would play them with the volume up <laughs> with the announcers talking. That's who he was, a funny, competitive kid. Here's a list of things he loved. Rotel dip, nachos, snow cones, smoothies, tacos, wings, Sprite, Kool-Aid. Waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning on Saturday and watching college game day all day. And also staying up past bedtime, even after mom and I have made everyone go to sleep. He'd stay up and watch highlight videos of mom and I in our sports days. He also in love, he loved teasing Dante and Ace. They would go at it all day and all night. But last and not least, he loved hearing mom and I say, good job, kid. Not good job, CJ, good job, good job, kid because 
although he had accomplished a lot and he had many accolades, we just viewed him as our kid. Nothing special, athletically, just our kid. That's the way we viewed him. Even with all the accolades, the kid that I remember the most is the kid that studied the civil rights movement religiously and just never could wrap his hands around why different races had so many issues and problems with one another. He would often say, Dad, man, these people are crazy. And I'd say, yeah. he said, yeah, I'm talking about blacks and whites. And I said, yeah, you're right, son. He was naive. It was just easy for him to treat people with the same respect that he wanted in return. I'll also remember the kid that would rather spend time with an unpopular kid over a, over a popular kid because they needed it more. And we talked about that. I have classmates here um, that we grew up in high school and what we used to do was seek out the kids maybe that have learning disabilities, the kids with Down syndrome. And we would take those kids and pull them into our group to make them feel special, find them a prom date, things like that. And years later, looking at CJ and w watching him kind of do the same things makes me more proud than any basket he can make, any touchdown he can score, or any home run he can hit. Because those things are far more impactful to me as a father. After every touchdown, he would run and hurry and give the ball to the rep. No celebration. No dancing, nothing. After every basket and basketball, before the ball got through the hoop, he was already back at the other end of the floor. In baseball, if you hit a home run, if you weren't paying attention, you'd think it was a triple by how fast he'd run around the base. Just didn't want the attention. It just was not that important to him to be highlighted. We used to always tell him, listen, man, if you're that good, you don't have to talk about yourself. Other people will talk about you. And we put that in him since he was a kid. And that's one of the things that we're the most proud of is his humble spirit. We told him, you can be a great athlete. There are thousands of them that have come and gone. Some of the great ones have come and gone. We don't talk about them anymore. Michael Jordan stopped playing. Well, they're still playing in the NBA right now. King Griffey Jr. stopped playing baseball years ago. Well, there's a league and there's going to be a game today. Joe Montana stopped playing football a long time ago, but they still have the Super Bowl. The game doesn't stop with you. And when you're done playing, the game moves on. So we told him, you need to make sure you find a way to leave a legacy beyond a sport. We told him, the cleats are not your life shoes. There's so many more stories that I could tell you about CJ, but it would take me months, possibly years. If there is one that perfectly fits or describes Cedric Harris Jr., like Arturo said, it would be the act of him donating his organs to save lives at the same hospital that failed to save his. As I close, I would like everyone to remember CJ, not by what you saw in a video clip, not by a stat line that you read in the paper, not even by a report card with straight A's that he was so, so happy to bring home to us and hang on the wall and put on the refrigerator. He'd get copies made. Don't remember him by those things, even though we're proud of him. Remember him by how he made you feel when you were in his presence. We often ask ourselves as human beings, what can we do to make this world a better place? 
What can we do? Can we donate? Can we visit? Can we, what can we do? Can we get together? My answer is simple. Be like CJ. Thank you.